Drone Log 19. Hey guys, it's Adam and Jay from the AeroWorks Workshop, and we are back again. Yeah, we've been gone a little while, but uh, hey, business calls, and we got we got to stay busy. So we're back, and we want to get uh, to another vlog today. Today we've got some cool accessories for the Mavic. Uh, Jay, what do you got here? Yeah, on this one we have a new gimbal lock right here. As you know, on the old one that you take the dome off. Some people like to fly with it. I don't. And then you also have a lock here for the camera. And this is something that you definitely want to have on there because you don't want the camera moving around. Well, what Tirox has come up with is they've come up with a dome that has the lock built into it. So nice. what's good about that is that you just put it on like this, get the camera in there, and then boom, it's locked in. That's really nice. Yeah, and, and I remember when uh, in flying my Mavic, sometimes, and as, as due diligence as you'd be, you yeah. forget this little guy in the back. You take the cover off, but you leave this clear piece hidden up in there behind there, only to find out that your uh, monitor was telling you you had a gimbal uh, overload or something, and you don't want to do that and wear out the motor. So I know also with this one, some people were catching there's a little ribbon in there where the wires go to mm, the camera. That's right and they were getting it ripped off by this. So uh, a Tirox, the uh, description will be down in the bottom of this, but it's really nice cover for the Mavic. Yep, it's kind of an all-in-one. Right. And you've got some cases. Now we did some case reviews a while back. We've done a lot of case reviews. Uh, and you know, one of the case re reviews we did was the Nook case, which is great for outdoor work, camping, on-site shooting. But if you're traveling a lot like we are and you want a little bit more streamlined case, but that you can still fit everything in, uh, we've got another one here. Yeah, this is from RL Soco, and what it is, it's a Mavic case. It's kind of a hard outside shell, and on the inside, you can see it carries everything that you That's would need nice. for the for the Mavic. Um, I personally just used it last week uh, going to Florida. It worked real nice because it fit inside a backpack that I had right. along with my Spark. Um, what also is good about this is it comes with some accessories that you don't normally get with other stuff. It has a nice strap if you just wanted to use it to carry it around your shoulder. It comes with the feet for the Mavic, so if you're flying in taller grass you can bring it up off the ground. Also has some felt feet to put on the bottom of it. And also a gimbal lock for nice. the transmitter. So I thought this was kind of nice. Like I say, I've used it already. Love this one and also this one. This is good for, like Adam said, outside, you know, if you're getting bounced around and stuff. And for travel, it's nice because it fits everything that you right. need. Right, and if you if you bought the original Mavic, you don't even get a case. If you bought yeah. the Flymore kit, yeah. you get that small leatherette bag, but it's really hard to cram additional batteries and things in there. This case uh, lets you put everything in there and a little bit more. And again, we're going to put a description to all the accessories down in the bottom. I would highly recommend go down there and check them out yourself. But it's a nice case overall for traveling. It's awesome. Didn't have any problem getting on the airplane with nice. it. And you just, you know, under your seat or up in the right. cargo hold. And that, that brings up a good point about traveling too. Don't forget, guys, you have to carry those batteries on. You yeah. can't check your batteries as small and compact as the, the Spark and Mavic are. We don't want to check batteries and luggage. So... Whether you bring your, your drone on or not, you got to bring the batteries, so you might as well bring everything with you at the same time. But we haven't had any problem, and we've been traveling a ton with our uh, our Phantoms and these, and no yep. problem. They, every once in a while, you get somebody who want to check it, but sure. no problems. Now, some other exciting news in the DJI world. Uh, DJI just launched a beta version of something they call the DJI Flight Hub. Now, this is an all-in-one management system. We're actually beta testing it right now. We'll have a full review on how to use it and what it's going to be used for. But it's essentially an all-in-one uh, pilot and aircraft management system. So not only can you keep track of all the pilots in your organization, your aircraft, but you can actually see and launch live missions from a essentially a command center. So if you've got teams around the country or in the same state even working on different projects, you can actually live track what is going on on those missions, see live feeds, keep track of uh, pilot hours and aircraft hours. So we're going to be looking into that here uh, over the next month and hopefully get out and do some real-world testing on it 
and we'll do a uh, an overview maybe in a future vlog or a uh, a dedicated vlog just to the flight hub system. So if you're if I'm out flying and our other pilot Kyle is out flying, you can actually see both of us up on the. That's what they say. Now we again we're in it's in beta test and, and you're supposed to be able to see up to like four screens at the same time. So great for for inspections things like that where you may need to stream back a live feed to a command center or a uh, maintenance organization. Great for law enforcement. Right. Out doing a search and rescue, flying around, you want to send that feedback to a command center, even in another state potentially. So we're real excited about that, and uh, like I said, we'll, be, we'll have a review of that shortly. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see how that works out. We are going to be doing a full review coming up. I know a lot of you have been excited to see the M200 series in a full review, something other than what you might see on DJI's site. We have an M200 as well as an XT and an X4S camera for that. Uh, and we just recently got the Crystal Sky Monitor, great monitor. We're still using and uh, getting all the bugs worked out of that so that we can use it for our organization. But we're going to have a full M200 pros and cons review coming up. So if you've been thinking about buying an M200, you're not sure, you know, should I invest that much money? Why should I? Why? What's the, you know, the pros and cons? We're going to have a great video about that coming up probably in the next vlog after this one. Well, for cold weather, though, I think that's going to be a good Oh, exactly. Thing. Cold yeah. weather, I mean, the weatherproof part of it is great, but for cold weather, the redundancy of the batteries, and that's all the thing, you know, we're going to cover a lot of that in the next uh, in the next review. Yeah. So I see the FAA came up with this LANC system. Right. We've we've talked a little bit about the LANC system again, and, and we have it here. It's the low altitude authorization and notification capability. It's a big, long word. But basically what it allows 107 pilots to do is... When you have a spot that you want to fly in, it's, it, it grants basically instant access to that airspace. Now, by now you should have seen the grid system that a lot of the airports are being required to put out. And in fact, the FAA has implemented this at about 40 airports around the country as kind of a test uh, case for the LANC system. Uh, even though there's grid systems in all the states, they're not all active yet, so we're waiting for that to slowly all come online but there are some states and cities that you can actually test it out in and I encourage you to go test it out there's a couple uh, sites private sites Skyward is one right. and AirMap is one that are implementing the LANC system hopefully the FAA will allow you to just do it yourself uh, but right now those two companies are the ones implementing it so you can sign up for a free account you can go to one of these airports that is on one of the 40 airports that are approved already and as long as you pick a, an area for your operation that falls within the grid system, so that being that one, two, three, or 400 foot altitude, you simply submit the area, you submit that you're a 107 pilot, and you get a PDF document that says you're allowed to fly there between such and such date, such and such time. So it's instant access, no need to call anybody, no need to uh, file for a waiver that takes 90 to 120 days to get. Um, if at all. If at all, yeah. And now what this doesn't do, and for us, we have a lot of projects where we work right at an airport because maybe there's a uh, mm -hmm. landfill nearby or something of that nature. Um, so if you need to work at an airport or with outside of the parameters of that zero to 400 feet level, then you need to do the waiver process, which is slightly different than the authorization process. Have you already tried that? Yeah, I did. And actually when the... Uh, the Skyward came out with it. I went online and uh, the, one of the uh, airports in Minnesota was one of the one, one of the 40 and actually went through the process and we were able to get approval basically instantly. So once you pick the area, it falls within the, uh, you know, 400 or less foot grid, uh, pick the date and time, bam, you get a certificate, little thing that says you can fly there. So it works. Um, again, it's going to be, it's probably going to be great for about 80% of the operations that people are waiting on doing. It won't solve the issues with people who need to fly directly inside of airspace. That's going to require a few extra steps. Uh, the Skyward and AirMaps charge for that now? Right now they're not. We don't know what they're going to do in the future. Now they all, both those uh, companies have paid services for flight logging and, and, and data management, aircraft management. Right now they're letting people get into it and see how it is free. I don't know if there's going to be a charge. Uh, for some people, that might just be the cost of doing business. You know, if it costs you $9.99 per authorization, well, that's worth it versus waiting 90 days or 120 or losing the job. So, you know, I, I don't think we should have to pay for it as pilots. We don't pay for things like that in the, in the manned aircraft world. But, again, um, 
another chance, another opportunity for somebody to make money in the UAS, UAS industry. So yeah, check out the land system, check out Skyward. Um, again, they have free accounts right now. Sign up, doesn't cost you anything if you want to give it a try. Um, and we'll keep posting information about that. We'll put links to both companies down in the description to where you go to see how to use the system. Skyward actually has a lot of training videos uh, on their site of how to uh, apply for the land uh, approval. So we'll put links to that down, down uh, in the description. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe because again, and click that notification button so that you get uh, notified when we have new vlogs coming out. Again, the M200 Crystal Sky will be coming out next. And uh, we'll try and get these vlogs coming out more often. Sometimes we get tied up with work, but uh, we're back at it and uh, we'll see you soon then. Safe flying. Yep. <laughs>